We all love a good three pedal car. A manual transmission really adds to the driving experience, but an often overlooked thing when swapping a modern five speed into a classic automobile and retrofitting a transmission into it is bell housing alignment. And what I mean by bell housing alignment is that the input shaft of the transmission is centered to the crank pilot. If your bell housing is misaligned and out of spec, it can cause hard clunky shifting and even worse, excessive wear on the transmission's input shaft bearing and other components. So what we're gonna be showing you guys today is how to properly align a bell housing. But before we do that, make sure to like and subscribe to the Summit Racing YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any videos like this. Celebrity interviews, tech content, and so much more, we're always doing something fun. Okay, let's jump right into this. So the first step of a new clutch install, anything like that, is checking your flywheel run out. You wanna make sure this is flat and straight. So the closer to zero, um, the better ideally. We already went ahead and checked this and we're at three thousandths, which is in spec, no issue. So moving on from there, we're gonna go ahead and install the bell housing. Now it's important to like clean the dust off everything, check the back of the block for high spots, that kind of stuff, and you're gonna address those as needed. So if you have like a big nick that's protruding and you can feel it with your finger, go ahead and grab a flat file and file that down and clean it up because you just want good mating surfaces. So with that done, we're going to go ahead and throw our bell housing on and we're going to torque this thing to 37 foot pounds. The next step, once we got all our bolts installed, is to go ahead and torque these to 37 foot-pounds, which is what the factory spec is. With our bell housing installed and torqued, we're gonna go ahead and get our dial indicator set up. So let's do that. So after we got the bell housing on and torqued, I went ahead and rolled the LS over and put it on top dead center on cylinder number one. And I used one of these cool little whistles to do that. These things are awesome. Now, next thing to do is set up the dial indicator inside the bell housing. And I've gone ahead and done that already. Everybody's setup's gonna be a little bit different. So just set it up to where the key is, is you're riding on the inside of this ring here and you don't want anything else touching. Go ahead and spin this thing over a couple times to make sure nothing touches and the kind of the number, um, the needle moving around stays consistent and then we can move on. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and stick some masking tape at what I'm gonna call on the bottom. This will be my 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock and nine o'clock. I know I'm upside down, but it'll make it easier to do the math in the end. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some tape on the bell housing, and then we're gonna to proceed to our next step. So I have it set up at zero right now, and the dial indicator is about a third of the way into its travel, so I'm gonna be able to get a negative number reading as well. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have a friend spin this thing over, and I'm gonna find the lowest point in the bell housing, and then that's gonna be my new zero. And the reason we're doing that, because wherever the low point is, we wanna move it the opposite way. And we're gonna figure out where the low point is, figure out where the high point is, cut that distance in half, figure out what alignment dowels we're gonna need, and then change the dowels and align the bell housing. It seems like a lot, but kind of once you figure it out, this isn't that bad. So let's jump right into it and figure out where our new zero is. So as I said, I grabbed a friend so I can watch the dial indicator as I have them rotate the engine around. So we have it zeroed. This is gonna be our starting point. We're gonna find the lowest point in this circle now and go from there. So start rotating. So I had him go an entire circle so I can get an idea where the low spot's gonna be. So I think it's somewhere around up in here. So I'm gonna have him go around again and uh, double check that. 
So rotate it, please. So after running this around a couple times, we figured out where our low spot is. And it's right here, kind of right about, a, I'd say like 1130, 1145. So this will be our new zero. From here, we'll run it around a couple more times and figure out where our high spot is. Once we've figured out where our high spot is, we're gonna cut that distance in half and move the bell housing in the opposite direction to try to center it up. With our dial indicator now reset to zero, we're gonna go ahead and rotate this around and we're gonna measure it at these four points and see what our number is. So as you can see, our side to side alignment is fantastic. Our top to bottom alignment is a little bit off. So we're gonna cut this number in half, which will be 11. So our bell housing is measured and we referred to the offset dowel pin guide and half of our number is 11 thousandths. So that's kind of center of the road and we grabbed a set of 14 thousandths offset pins because that's what they recommend. So I'm gonna go ahead and yank the bell housing off, knock the factory dowel pins out, and then install these. Now, something important to note when doing this is that the offset is one way on the dowel pin. So these are our 14 thousandths offset dowel pins and you can kind of see here, I know it's hard to see because they're small, but the pin is ground on an offset. So this side would be the most offset and then this side is like almost flat when you run your finger across it versus this has a large lip. So the key with these is, is that you wanna operate these, you're gonna use turn these to the same degrees to locate the bell housing. So we know we need to go up. So I'm gonna take our pin and I'm gonna put the shoulder on the bottom and that should raise the bell housing up and we'll go from there. It's important that these dowel pins operate on the same plane because if they're um, adjusted to two different offsets, it's gonna move the bell housing, not left or right or up and down, but in a weird way, and you don't want that. So um, it's important to make sure that your dowel pins are turned on the same plane. So kind of, I like to check them on the table and see that the non-oblong side is this side, and then same on this one. I go ahead and I mark that side with a paint marker so I can adjust them on the same plane. So let's get this bell housing yanked off and get the new dowel pins installed. So after I knocked the old pins out, I went ahead and pulled the flywheel off as well because the shield here, um, I was having a hard time getting them started and getting them in there. So it just made it easier to take everything off and install the pins that way. I installed the offset all the way up. So that should get us much closer than we were before. And in theory, if my math is right, get us within the run out spec. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the flywheel back on, get that torqued, um, bell housing, and dial indicator, and we're gonna check it again. So what we're gonna do now is find our new low point, and that'll be our new zero, and then we'll check our measurement again. I'm gonna have uh, my buddy rotate this around, check it, we'll find the new zero, and then see if we fixed our misalignment or we need to adjust the dowel pins a little bit. So let's get to it. Rotate it, please. So we went ahead and refound zero and it's about at the same spot last time, just to, it's changed a little bit and we have offset dowel, so that makes sense. So now we're gonna go ahead and rotate this a couple more times and check the misalignment and see if we need to adjust our dowels anymore. So with the dial indicator re-zeroed, now it's time to recheck the bell. So we're gonna run this around a couple times, look at the dial indicator and see if we're in our 5,000 spec. If I did my math right and everything works out, we should be around three, which is right in the center, and that's perfect. Mm -hmm. 
So I've got our dowels where I believe they belong. I've checked it once before and my number was kind of really off. Um, then I started to look and realize that I did install the dowels upside down for where I wanted them. So the best way to get these things out to adjust them is I like to take the air hammer in the back and just vibrate them out a little bit, put the screwdriver in it with a wrench and rotate them around. Now it is very important that you rotate these pins on the same plane in the aspect of if this one is turned at 45 degrees on the offset, you want the other one at 45 degrees on an offset. You don't want them um, off plane or else it's going to throw your adjustment all off. So we've gone ahead and found our low spot again, recentered it. Um, and now we're going to recheck it. Now, again, I have checked this once before, so I know the results, but I just wanted to show you guys what a set of offset dowels do and how much it moves it. So go ahead and rotate it over to a quarter of a turn. Good. And so we're gonna stop right there. And as you can see, our first number was um, 11 thousandths. And then I jumped up to 20 thousandths and I was confused. Um, flipped our dowels around and then we ended up at 4 thousandths. So that's good. Now we're gonna go ahead and check it at the bottom. So rotate it another quarter turn, please. Good. And right there, we're um, right about four thousandths as well. Now you can see my second number was 45 thousandths. Um, and that made me scratch my head because that was going the wrong direction. And that's kind of how I figured out that I had installed the dowels backwards. So let's go to the um, nine o'clock position. You can see that one's right at 004 as well. So left or right is perfect and up and down is pretty good as well. Now we are within the spec, which the spec is five thousandths. So five thousandths are under, the closer you can get to zero, the better. Now in high RPM race applications, you cut that five thousandths number in half and you kind of want to get it as close to 25 thousandths as possible. Now, our kind of issue is, is we're sitting at the bottom, we're right in the middle of the spec. So um, getting these adjusted and kind of, you know, we have a 14 thousandths offset pin, our offset was 11 thousandths. So that's where our extra three thousandths comes from. So if we could get a set of 11 thousandths offset pins, we could make this thing dead nuts zero. But we're within the spec and we're good. Now it's an important thing to note as well is Every time you make a major change, it's a good idea to recheck this. So new clutch, you've had the bell off a bunch. Um, you just need to be very, very cautious about that and check this often if you're pulling the trans in and out of your car. Another thing to note is every bell housing is gonna be different. So this is for our Summit bell housing. Now, if you get like a Lakewood or some other bell housing, the number is gonna change. So it's very, very important that you check this um, if you ever make a bell housing change, any major changes to your build. Otherwise, you should be good to go. So we have this all centered up. It's good to go. And um, yeah, I can leave these pins where they are. And this thing is ready to get a manual trans and go in a car. So. Just like that, with a little bit of elbow grease and brain power, we have our bell housing indexed and ready to go. Now, remember, the closer you can get this thing to center of the crankshaft and being perfectly zero, the smoother operations, the higher RPM shifts and transmission longevity you're gonna get. So really take your time setting this up. It is very tedious and it is time consuming. If you get frustrated, just walk away and come back because you're gonna wanna get this right. It's gonna save you some money on the back end. Trust me. Now, if you have any tips or tricks to make this process easier, drop them in the comments below or tell us what kind of tech content you'd like to see from us in the future. So until next time, I'm Justin with Summit Racing and happy shifting.